Alrighty guys, what is going on? None of these POV things are one player at a time. I decided to do two here basically because look around the 12th mark here, Tarek's like, yep, I'm doing the job down. Automatic says, mate, you've done enough. Have a rest. Let me take over for the rest of the game. So I'm just going to split into these two sections, so it's all going to be in this one video. So round number one, Cloud9 put a lot of effort here in towards locking down the top of middle. See two bait and switches going on here on both sides of the map, both sides of middle. Someone ran out balcony or walked out balcony could be a problem, but you'll see Tarek being in the corner avoids all these flashes, even though Rush has to turn away. Tarek is here, and he's able to hit the shots now, he gets a nice little 2k. Automatic is also pushed up close there, and you see they're able to shut it down relatively easily. They do end up going here towards A. Stewie spots the player, but smartly he falls back here. Doesn't want to take the fight. Even a 4v2 would be doable. He wants to make it a 5v2. He respects SK. This is fair enough. Good 5v2 movement. And yeah, they win this round with quite an easy retake. So right now you can see SK have duped C9. They think it's going to be a B hit. Tarek is committed over here, quite far towards B. And Rush is stuck by himself on the A site. But they end up going towards A. Tar they learn all this information from the nades come in. Rush learns that Tarek's trapped out by a smoke. You see, what, they, what do they know right now? They know there's a lot of players all concentrating on the A site. They know Rush has just taken down two. And this means for Tarek that a lot of concentration is probably going to be pulled over here. Especially like you see towards Fallen, he's trying to look towards... Look towards a player on Rush on site. So Terry thinks he's drawn a lot of attention. Rush has done a good job here. I can probably walk through this smoke and help out my teammate. Even though it is a 4v3, 4v3, you don't want an ice cat better set up. So this is, uh, I don't mind this play. So he catches the bomb carry off guard. It's a nice little uh, transfer on defer. Can't try quite kill Cold Zero, sorry. But you see, he just waits here in the corner. He doesn't want to refight with low HP. And also, Cold Zero now is stuck um, in apartments with a CZ and armor, and he's just got no round bonus because they haven't fought him. So we're going to do this next round, Cold Zero has just his CZ in his armor and he has zero dollars. So this is a setback straight away and I don't think Tarek really thought about this but it's just something to note, the economy moving forward into this one. Not much going on in this one for SK, no real utility usage, there's a good smoke by Skoodoodle towards middle which allows him to peek out and maybe help Tarek if they try to explode onto him after that initial kill but nothing really happens from SK and you'll see Tarek just going to stay here watching Boiler. SK decides to just run through, and I mean there's not really much to break down here, Tarek just gets a few nice frags, which we all like to see. So next round here, Tarek has pretty good movement on the site. This is interesting to start off with, Rush is obviously just watching here towards the balcony, but he can't see anyone washing up middle, Skadoodle doesn't have eyes on, on middle either, so Tarek could just get slow walked upon here, I guess they're relying on the fact SK are more likely to throw flashbangs and stuff. But Tarek, I mean a little bit risky, but I mean you, you take it, I mean if someone does peak apps he has a huge advantage, no one's going to be looking that high up. That's just something. And then he's going to play this box here. I'm just going to fast forward this a little bit. And you'll see as the take comes in, good counter flash for Rush to have a little peek. He's back now watching towards the, the apartments area. You see as this take comes in, SK uses the smoke that, um, I mean, sorry, Tarek uses the smoke SK throw very well here to his advantage because he doesn't have to worry too much about anyone pushing through onto site. So you'll see here, he starts off. He gets this one kill, uses the smoke, and then he falls back quite smartly, and he knows with Rush alive, he can jump up on top of here. Because Rush was still there in the pit, he knew Rush would be taking the taking the fight, so no one could wrap around him this way, because Rush wouldn't allow it. Rush is going to fight them, they're going to be more worried about this pit player, so he knows he has a couple of seconds just to jump up here onto the box. And of course, he was making sure that no one pushed through the smoke here, had a little check of that before he jumped on top. Jumps on top, does get spotted, but he gets one more kill and puts his team into a, a 3v2 until Phelps get a kill on the rotator. But yeah, it's still good work from him, a 2k, a kill from Rush coming in, that's a decent hold of on the players coming up short. So this round here, Tarek and Rush are obviously playing to the advantage of their CZs, or the, the disadvantage I say, they're good at close range, not so good at long range, so they're not waiting back in pit or something, they're playing very aggressive. Again, ignoring this app's position, I've done this a couple of times, but SK really haven't capitalized, because normally you do want some kind of bracket control before you go out. So they've got a player boosted and Tarek, so it's basically like a double peek here. And I like this setup, definitely uh, not a bad idea with the CZs. And you see Tarek's going to really make it work here, and he's not going to be uh, hes not going to be shy about it. So he's going to be on taking uh, first contact as he's just a slightly little bit wider. Avoids the flash. Two nice kills here. You see, once he's found out, he doesn't wait to... Um, he doesn't wait around hoping someone else will peek him. He wants to peek them with the CZ. That's why he peeks out wide into Fur. In the boiler, Fur can't headshot him. And it's a good play in the end. And he keeps pushing here. He wants to stay aggressive. He's got the momentum, so uh, why not? Tarek gets caught off guard as they're trying to escape from Skadoodle in middle. And just like that, he has a 3k and the round's completely turned on its head. And around, they really shouldn't have uh, any presence in it at all because they've got CZs and stuff, but they make it work. And again, here, here's the scope into middle. He knows it's probably not going to be looking towards the smoke. Creeps around and catches Cold Zero off guard. And honestly, it's a very good good round by Tarek. He's using the, uh, the CZ to his advantage. 
and then just keeping keeping the momentum going with the AK there in the end. Is SK going to be more worried about middle and probably not expecting someone to peek out in the balcony like he did. Two rounds later, SK forced into the last, so they know that they're going to be in a full eco. So Tarek decides to push down here, basically just apply the pressure, give him no room to think, no room to try and set anything up, work anything out. If not, it's a full eco. It's good just to get in the opposition's face if you can, and you see Tarek does it successfully. He goes down here. He does do it with the M4. You might argue maybe send an SMG down, but if you look at Cloud9's money, they're not too worried about building up a bank. So, And the M4 has an advantage, especially on that peak towards second mid, that first one towards fur. So I don't mind it. And you see the whole of Cloud9 just end up collapsing onto this one. I'm really just destroying SK pretty quick into the round. And as I said, that can have some kind of psychological advantage on occasions, despite SK Gaming's huge amount of experience. So this round here, Automatic's obviously been boosted at the new box, and they're playing a, a two-man setup here, a bait for Stewie pretty much. Automatic will um, probably end up sacrificing himself if they come towards here. But you see the fate comes out here, Skiddle gets the kill onto Fawn, and this forces the rotate. Tarek starts to move, and Stewie starts to move as well. And Automatic here, with about 15 seconds left, starts to fall off. And this might seem like not a big thing, but it actually is quite a big deal. Stewie gets picked off straight away, but they think that's probably the rotator, and they've sold this fake quite well. Especially with Tarek coming back now relatively fast, they know a player has been moved off when Tarek comes into fight. So as they start to clean up, Tarek comes in, gets this pick, and that's quite important. And he gets another one, not sorry, yeah, Tarek gets the pick, he ends up playing a lot of pressure towards Phelps, and this ends up turning the players around. Tarko knows this is a plant with 9 seconds left, and they think they've forced the rotate off, but because Automatic jumped off the new box boost, he's able to get this kill straight away. If he was still up there, even if he got the initial kill, it put him in a good spot to win the round, but they'd still be a lot more thorough in clearing it out. So instead he gets the element of surprise, and SK end up losing this one with two players left alive. Skadoodle and Tarek both get picks over towards the A site in this round. And Automatic decides to come back here and he wants to have a peek towards Banana and see if anything is going on there. No flashbang or anything, because sometimes it is just good to try and catch a player off guard. So I was talking about in that QB Fire video, it's always good to try and catch a player off guard. Phelps is spamming uh, towards Stewie there, so he decides to take a peek and it works out quite well for him. And this is something I don't mind, even though it's a 5v2, you maybe say just play passive. He does just walk through a smoke here and just apply more pressure. And this, it's always good to be unpredictable. Maybe learn this from Stewie, but I don't mind that. You see Taka gets caught off guard with a nade out and there's the bomb straight away. And he doesn't fall back. He wants to keep going. 5v1, they're feeling confident. And yeah, you can just play this very passive and that's also a correct way to play. But as I said before, it's always good to mix it up. And nice little one tap onto Cold Zero. Really aggressive getting their face and closing out the round really well, as you can see, up 12 to three. Automatic plays a huge role in two of the three wins Cloud9 needed on the T side here. Just to close out this one, you see this one here, Fur's getting collapsed upon, he just holds the angle quite smartly, not getting too aggressive. And then right now he knows he needs to go back and clear out Banana, catches Taco trying to rotate him fast. Taco did have a fast flank, so he was trying to catch him off guard. Automatic just catches him, and this is very good, you want Banana control on these retakes because obviously if you don't have Banana control, you're all trapped on the site, you don't have Con or Banana control, you're going to be quite congested in here and it's... Yeah, good, good idea to have at least one of them under control. Applies a lot more pressure to the CT side. So we're down into a 2-on-2. Two two. And Automatic's just going to peek out here and he wants to try and protect Stewie. You see Stewie's caught uh, in the back of the site. So he doesn't want to get him collapsed upon. Fallen misses a shot there. But then, very well done, he misses the shot. And Stewie's able to win this 1v1. But yeah, you couldn't. You could just hide in that corner. Argue wants to hide, but with the bomb planted back there, he's not as effective anyway. So he wants to try and protect Stewie, who is in a position to protect the bomb, and it ends up working out quite well. This play here, I love the push through the smoke, and it's really just something a bit different. And you see, they're going to catch um, falling completely off guard. They just jump through their own smoke, and look at the map right now. Stewie and Automatic have just jumped straight through this, completely caught off fallen. They know that this early into the round, they probably haven't caught a rotator off quite yet. Uh, they've applied a bit of pressure here, the smoke's still down towards middle, and you see how far away the Rotator and Phelps is, so they're quite confident if they push through here, Fallen misses the shot here with a well-timed flash, they're able to catch him off guard, and that's exactly what happens. And now Fur is in a world of hurt, because he's got players wrapping around this way, players wrapping around this way, and there's not really much he can do in this one. So Automatic just keeps applying the pressure, switches the AWP, Rush gets Con to Fur, and he doesn't want them gaining any move. This is what I was talking about before, when I was talking about how important it is to have Con or Banana control, because you can apply a lot of pressure. And Automatic doesn't stop applying the pressure. The AWP is very strong at this angle. He gets two kills, and then he's about to get the third one. Taco's really got nothing he can do. And there we go. Well done round. Automatic and Tarek played this one very well between them, dropping 58 frags. And that's it. Make sure to subscribe if you like this kind of content, and I'll catch you guys in the next one.